Hi there and welcome to another video from Blue Hub. My name's Callum and I'm going to be taking you through a quick video today of which bill of materials is right for your business. Now if you're familiar with deer or you're new to deer, there are two types of bills of materials. You have an assembly bills of materials and you have a production bills of materials. An assembly bill of materials is a little bit more simplistic and um, is more suited to small scale assemblies, pickers, and then production bill of materials can be suitable right the way up to full scale manufacturers. Today we're going to look at which one should you be using. So moving over on to the first slide of the presentation we've got here, we're going to first take a look at the production bill of materials. Now, as mentioned before, the production bill of materials is more suited to full scale manufacturers. Okay, and now there are pros and cons to each of these. The pro to using production bill of materials are you get scheduling and capacity planning functionality. You're able to do subcontracting. So if you have any form of co-manufacturing, subcontracting, outsourced operations, then you may want to be looking in this direction. It has production steps where we can break down our bill of materials into steps of production, such as setup, manufacturing, and even quality control. You're also able to use the MES app, which stands for Manufacturing Execution System, and this allows you to control, um, so your workers to control their tasks and operations from an app, and they can scan raw materials as and when they're using them. It's also great for tracking time of operations and being able to report this back. We obviously get production accounting, so raw materials, work in progress, finished goods. And then we also have bomb resources and locations. So resources are people, um, places or machines. And then we have different locations. So resources might be me working on a job using this tool. We can put those in these bill of materials. Mm -hmm. and then locations, you can track things such as work centers. So different, different places that are used throughout the process. Finally, I'm just going to move my head a little bit, multi-stage, which is similar to production steps. But what I mean by that is we're able to account for nested bill of materials much easier. We're able to say that this, this item is level one, this has a level two, and this is level three. So it's bills and materials within bills and materials, and it's much easier to manage using the production bomb. Cons to using the production bill of materials are... Um, quite self-explanatory really. As, you, as you've just heard, there's a lot of features there, but to get those features you need to input the data into the system and put the time into the system. So the first one is increased user input. To actually process that, that production bill of materials takes a lot of action from the user and multiple clicks throughout the process. The time required to actually set up the production bill of materials is almost 5x. To set up an assembly bill of materials is quite basic, it's just consisting of these components make this product, whereas production bill of materials, as you've seen from them, pros, there's more things that will go into it so it may take you a longer period to access that data. Increased training, it's one thing to get the data in place but then you've got to train the users on how to use the system. So there's going to be much more sessions required and much more time to embed that process. And finally, internal process changes. This one's more of a potential risk because DO will work in a certain way and you may need to review how you work internally to match how DIA wants you to operate. So that's production bill of materials. Now on to assembly bills of materials. Assembly bills of materials, are they still have great functionality and at the production bill of materials is fairly new to deer and assembly bills of materials has actually been used for the past three years by us at blue hub for many different clients so saying that it's more suited to kitters and and small level assembly people like i said earlier is actually slightly unfair it really all comes down to what you want out of the system and what data you want to track and also how much time and effort you want your workers to put into that process so the main key difference here between the two is production bill of materials, you saw the level of detail it can go down to. It can track people, places, machines, components, steps, scheduling, capacity planning. 
Whereas assembly builds and materials is we are making this product. It consists of these components and that is it. We can track things like labor cost in there and small wastage, um, but that's about it. So pros, we have component tracking. We can see what raw materials are required to make finished goods. Labor cost tracking, we can take into account costs of labor. Batch and serial traceability, as does production bomb, but you're able to track batch and serial numbers of produced items. The biggest pro, it's simple to set up and the processes are really easy to manage. Okay. A lot of our clients start on assembly builds and materials and then grow into production bomb. So that may be more suitable to your business. The final pro that isn't actually on the, this list, unfairly, but um, assembly builds and materials actually has a function called auto assembly and auto disassembly. Now what that allows you to do is automatically assemble a product or automatically disassemble a product. And that can be really, really useful for people who, for example, sell online sales channels. They receive an order for a bundle or a kit and they need to put that item together. And rather than you having to go and create an assembly to put those items together, they will look and see that it's an auto assembly and automatically put it together for you when you receive a sale for it depending on the raw materials they have in stock so that's a really great pro to assembly bomb cons now first one is is, is it's a little bit difficult to manage sub assemblies it's not as efficient as production builds and materials there's more steps involved to manage them so if you do have multi-level assembly I maybe would be a little bit on the fence and be leaning towards more production bill of materials depending on how uh, larger operations are. They can still be managed, just a few more clicks involved. Subcontracting, we can do it. Like I said before, we worked with Assembly Builds and Materials for three years and we had many clients that used had outsourced operations and it can be done. However, it's a workaround and it's not a native function and it's not as intuitive as how the production bomb manages it. So that is a con in my eyes. There's no planning functionality um, or scheduling or capacity planning. Again, we, we created workarounds using the tasks module and using the calendar, but it's nowhere near as close as what the production bill of materials gives you. Multi-stage production, we can't do steps like the production bomb can. It is a one level assembly. And that's it really for pros and cons for the production bomb and assembly bomb. So hopefully that'll give you a bit of a peace of mind if you're weighing up or trying to make this decision for your implementation and seeing how it would match to your business. What I want to do now is give you a quick five minute overview of each one so you can have a bit more tools to make your decision. Right, okay, so now we're in DEAR itself. Let's take a look at the two types of bills and materials. We're actually going to start off with the assembly bills and materials because it's a little bit simpler for, to take a look at. So first of all, to actually turn on a bill of materials, you'll want to come down and find your products that you wish to create a bills and materials for. And under the bills and materials drop down here, you'll want to select one of from one of the four type, well, three types of bills and materials. So there is a third, which is make to order bomb. We'll cover that in a separate video, a little bit different but you have assembly bomb and production bomb. So we're gonna select assembly bomb in this case. Once you've selected that, a new, a new menu will appear on the left-hand side called bills and materials, and this is what an, an assembly bomb looks like, okay? So all we have the ability to do here is list out the components required to make our finished product. So our finished product right now is a vanilla ice cream one liter tub, and to make this, we're going to use 500 labels, 500 lids, 500 tubs, 200 units of buttermilk, 5 units of glycerin powder, 360 units of milk, and 20 units of sugar. And this is to create 500 of the 1 litre tubs, okay? So it's as simple as that, just listing out your components and saying this, that that's what's required to make the finished item. The quantity to produce is what this bill of materials is based off. Depending on your business will depend what you put in there. If you're a high scale manufacturer, you're producing things like food where they're done in batches and large amounts, then you may want to go on something like a 500 or what your batch size is for that item. If you're making specific things like, I don't know, an iPhone, then you may actually put one in there and you would just list the components to make one. 
We then can mark auto assembly or auto disassembly as we spoke about earlier. And then you can easily edit the quantity section, wastage percentage section, wastage quantity, and you can easily add new items by selecting add more items and selecting your product, your raw material from the drop down list here. Once you're happy with all the raw materials, you then have the wasted um, the labour and overhead section where you can add a service item such as labour, quantity, an expense account, and the price that that or cost that labour is to you. Okay. And that's it for assembly bills and materials, really. They're then processed using what's called an assembly order, and we'll go ahead and quickly show you that now. So to process an assembly bills and materials, we can first save our changes. We can go ahead to production, new assembly. And this is what an assembly order looks like, very basic. We can select our location for where we're carrying out the assembly. We can type in our SKU for the products that we wish to make. So I'm just going to grab that from there. We can then select a work in progress account, finish goods account. We can say how many we're making, 500. We can determine the work in progress date. We can determine the batch and serial number for the finished item. And we can apply an expiry date if we're using FIFO traceability. Once you're happy with that, you can select load bill of materials and then authorize this job. The assembly order is then processed by a single step, which is the pick section. And all that you need to do here is select auto pick, which will pick the required components needed to make that finished item. And then once you click allocate and authorize, it will then allocate them components to that assembly order. They will be consumed and you will then have 500 vanilla ice cream, one liter tubs in stock. Okay, so you can see very little quick clicks, very easy to process nice and straightforward. So hopefully that gives you enough context for how assembly bills and materials work and if they're right for your business. Now we're going to take a look at production bills and materials. So production bills and materials, very similar. And we can select production bill and materials from the bill of materials drop down like so. The same Menu will be available on the left hand side, but it will say production bomb this time rather than bill of materials. Once we select this, we're then able to view our bill of materials. OK, so bill of, production bill of materials is a little bit more um, sophisticated. So there will be a separate video on our channel um, following this and how to set this up. But I'm just going to give you a very brief overview for now. So first of all, we have version control. We have our versions for our bill of materials. We have, again, our quantity to produce. So what is this bill of materials based on the amount we want to make? And these are our steps for production. So you can see in this operation, we actually have four, five steps to make this product. We have step one, which is setup, and it's a cleaning solution to clean, clean the machines. Step two, which is the flavoring, where we apply some vanilla flavoring. Step Three, although you'll see they have the same step number and that's because they are completed at the same time and that's blending where we're going to use some milk, buttermilk, sugar, glycerin powder and double cream. And then finally we have packing. We're going to pack that um, solutions into the tubs, lids and labels. And then finally we have quality control whereas we're going to follow an operation to check that product. Okay. The key differences here are we've got the steps to production you can see there are production step types. And if I select from here, you'll be able to see what they are. So manufacturing, setup, quality control, and co-manufacturing. So manufacturing is your standard operation. Setup is just a time only. Quality control, time only. And then co-manufacturing is where you manage your outsource operations. That will be covered in a separate video. We can then have line item types, so different to what we saw in the assembly bomb where it was just this is the component, we can actually have types on these. We have component, which is just a raw material. We have a resource, which is a person such as Callum, as you've seen dotted throughout these steps. 
we have notes and attachments. So notes are just free text fields. Attachments are documents or files you might want to attach to that step. Finished product, commonly used in um, co-manufacturing, but you can also use those for things like um, byproducts. So if something comes out of that operation that you then go on to sell or use somewhere else, then that would be a finished product. Byproduct or co-product, different terminology. And then inputs and outputs is where you're transferring um, outputs from one operation into an input into the next operation. And again, we also use those in co-manufacturing. We've got cycle times in here. We've got work centers of where that's being carried out. And as before, we have our wastage percentages and quantities. OK. So a little bit more in depth. Hopefully that gives you a bit of a view on the sort of level of detail. If you're still not sure, go ahead and watch our how to set up a production bill of materials video. That might give you a bit more of an idea. Before we finish today, I just want to show you what a production order looks like as we did for the production uh, assembly orders. So for a production order, we have access to three separate modules. We have the production order section where we manage all of our orders. We have the capacity planner, which is where we can plan capacity for resources and work centers. And then finally, we have the scheduler, which is a Gantt view of where we can view all our current operations in the system and we can put together a bit of a schedule. I'll just quickly load up that to show you and you can see all your orders in the system. You can view them on a dated time frame. And you can even select edit mode and drag and drop these operations around like so. You can expand these as well to see any subsections that are a part of these processes like so. So to create a production order, we go ahead and select production order from the production menu. Similar to how assembly order works, we want to go ahead and type in our product that we wish to make. We want to say where we're making that. We want to enter in the quantity that we're making. We have our finished goods and work in progress account. However, one different bit is how we calculate time because we have scheduling. So you have two types of capacity calculation from plan date forward and from plan date uh, required by date backwards. That just depends how you work. So if you want to work to a required by date, you would select that. You would enter in when you need this product for. Select the refresh button and DIA will then tell you in the form of a planned and release date of when you need to start procuring items for and when they're actually likely to arrive for you to start that process. You can then select load bill of materials, which will load in the bills of materials that we viewed earlier. Anything in blue is in stock. Anything in red is out of stock. We can then authorize this production order. And then releasing this order will say that we're ready to start production. You then process this production order by using something what's called runs. And runs are, are how we create and follow the process. And we can create a production run by clicking that option there, saying how many the run is for. So why this is useful is because we said we wanted to make 500, but let's say our run size was 250. So we actually might do this whole order in two runs or four or however many you want to do. So it's really for, for people who do run sizes or batch sizes. We can then create our run. We can select that from the tab. And then this is where we control the job itself. And this is really where we can start operations, stop operations, complete operations, and also report the amount of raw materials we've used. You can see all our steps are available on the left hand side. And we can update the actual quantities by selecting the menu and reporting what we've actually used. OK, so I've tried not to get too specific there because we're we are going to have vid individual videos on each of these so you can really make a decision. But hopefully just this, this gives you a high level overview of which bill of materials might be more suited to your business. Like I said before, if you're still unsure, go and check out our specific videos on both of these bills of materials. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to get in contact or leave a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.